Doctor, uh, thank you very much for calling in this morning. Um, clearly, you are uh, preparing for a surge uh, in potential new cases, in people getting screened. Uh, what are you seeing right now in terms of infection rates and, and volumes of people getting tested, and, and what do you anticipate? Well, thank you for having me. What we're seeing is a lot more action and a lot more concerned patients coming in and presumptive cases being diagnosed every day. We have a doubling in the state of Illinois over the last two days. Um, so what we're seeing is a continued increase of in the numbers. So we're on the way up of the curve for infected patients. Uh, and this, these measures that you're taking, I mean, this sort of separate screening area, um, a lot of what we're hearing about the potential stresses on the healthcare system are being able to, to test everybody, but then treat those infected. I mean, what do you, what does your facility look like in terms of capacity and, uh, and, and what could you take on? Is this going to add to your ability to take on more patients? Yeah, thank you for uh, bringing that up. So really the three biggest challenges that our entire healthcare structure is facing right now is our number of beds, adequate supplies, and exposure to our personnel. So two weeks ago, we sat down and said, no one's going to critique us if we're overprepared and we're in an empty hospital um, years from now. But if we're not prepared and can't take care of our city and our community, then we've let, we've let them down. So what we've done was built out our ambulance space to be a coronavirus triage area. We closed off a third of our ER, which is massive, so 20 dedicated beds that we could flip to 40 for patients to go through a private entrance into one area, and then took an entire area of the hospital using some technology, flipped some switches and changed the air pressure. So what we're trying to do is isolate those beds and those patients from the rest of the hospital by the safest way to increase the number of beds specific for this to safeguard the supplies in those regions so that we can we can uh, continue to care for people and then to minimize exposure so our healthcare workers can work. This was a very aggressive stance to prepare for what may happen, but we're seeing these numbers make it more likely that this will happen. So factually, we flipped our hospital from our daily operations of taking care of everything to preparing for the worst case scenario that we could possibly prepare for in conjunction with a phenomenal city response and state response in Illinois. Doctor, when you get on the phone uh, and you are making requests, you're telling people what you need, who are you getting to talk to and what are you telling them you need? So the, one of the advantages of surge moments like this in healthcare that we've experienced over time is the coming together of hospitals that historically compete with one another under the guise and direction of city leadership and state leadership and even federal leadership. In this case, the Chicago Department of Public Health has international experts in infectious disease with a tremendous amount of experience, and they are crowdsourcing through the mayor's office, the leaders of these individual hospitals, on a daily call to share information, to share knowledge, and to request resources that we need. So we feel very confident at this point in time that we have a listening ear to people that have the ability to go out and get those resources so that each of our hospitals can work together to provide the care that we need.